I am Sarina Singh and this is my Can I Have It All story. So, you know, there are a few things that I uh, now live by uh, very, very strongly. Uh, some of those were also ingrained in me, you know, as I was growing up, uh, you know, through my parents. Um, I was, uh, I think, very fortunate that I was given all the possible freedom to make my choices and decisions, even as a child. And I must give all that credit to both my parents. Um, sadly, I lost my father about two months ago. And that's a, uh, that's a loss, which is absolutely something that I can't even begin to articulate. But having said that, I think the few things that I would like to share, which are uh, very much a part of me now, but also were there in some form or the other, uh, you know, as I was uh, navigating through my career, uh, you know, uh, in the corporate world. The first one is that, you know, I am the hero of my life story. That doesn't make me selfish or self-centered. So I would like to clarify that for a lot of people who sometimes get very caught up in this whole dilemma about, you know, am I only thinking about myself? What about the others? But it's really, you know, the, the very famous oxygen mask theory. Save yourself first, take care of yourself first, and you can take care of everything else and everyone else around you. So I think that's my first principle that I am the hero of my life story. The second one is that if you don't ask, the answer is always no. The third one is that, you know, um, there is always a reason to do something and an excuse not to. So how is it that I can find reasons in making sure I can make a success of what I'm doing and feel happy? Um, success also doesn't always mean being aggressively ambitious, but it does mean going for your dreams, having that clarity as to what is it that I want. Um, when I say I can have it all, it's the all that I need to define for myself. So the short answer it is, is very achievable. But the provocative point I would like to put across is that I think the word balance can sometimes be overrated. Um, I try now not to use it in my vocabulary at all. So the two words are perfect and balance. I, I, I try not to put them into my uh, vocabulary and my way of thinking. So for me, you know, I think it is really the guilt of not being able to maintain the balance that is the biggest struggle. So letting go of that is extremely, extremely important. I think it comes to a time, you know, it comes to a place where um, every once in a while you review and assess for yourself what is important and what you want to prioritize for yourself. Um, there were times, you know, in my work life where um, I have been in projects where we work 20 hours a day and that was fantastic. I love that. The first few years of my life was only about work-work balance and I did use the word balance that time and I absolutely thrived in it on a day-to-day -day basis and then there came a time you know where I did need to make sure that you know post x hours in the day I would say okay now I switch off and you know now I spend time with family uh, with myself and doing all the things that make me re-energize and rejuvenate myself so my son was um, going to have his 12th board exams uh, he was a cricketer and had been a cricketer through all these years. So his main um, day routine was really about practicing cricket and, you know, going for matches and um, seeing all these videos for of cricketers, you know, what their techniques are, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So that, that's really what was important, of, important for him. That's what made him happy. And uh, we had somehow, you know, managed to pass through our 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. Um, you know, I, I joke that I did, I almost redid my schooling uh, those four years along with him. And then came his 12th standard and it was a bit of a tough one because, you know, also mentally and emotionally, the pressure of board exams is like crazy. He flunked all his pre-boards in the first round and the second round. And I was jolted. Um, I don't know what hit me. And that was when, you know, um, I just decided that I'm going to take 
four months off. Um, went back to my organization, spoke about it, and almost in a span of three to four days is when I was able to get all that sorted out. And you know, the point here that I want to make is that um, I was very fortunate, and there are absolutely organizations like the ones that I have been working for who are very, very empathetic about your situation, whether you're a man or a woman, and the fact that they support you at the times that you really need it. You know, it's very good to say we have policies and we have processes and we have everything that works well, but really when there is a time of need and when there is a certain situation that warrants the organization to step up and give you that support, are they able to do it or not? So let me first start with what I think they don't get right. Is just creating this larger than life agenda about wanting to do things and letting it stay on paper. So that's my biggest issue and concern with what I sometimes see happening. It's like a tick box and let's do it. Because the amount of conversation that happens around this topic versus really the impact that we see happening are so disproportionate, right? So to my mind, the few things that companies are doing right, as I've seen, or could do right where they're not, is one, really, really start walking the talk. What you're putting down really as targets, you know, for having X percentage women in whether mid-management or senior management roles or hiring X percent every year, etc, etc, or retaining, start really, really um, putting lots of things in practice for that. So, for example, when you are interviewing, even at that stage for new hires, make sure there's a 50% representation on both genders for a particular role. When you are looking at your performance cycles, make sure that for every promotion that is being given, there is equal men and women who are being considered for those promotions. Um, walk the talk in the way that if you are looking at um, getting visibility across the board to you know, senior board members, other senior uh, you know, leadership teams, there is equal representation from both genders when that is happening. I would say immense. I think the thing with the trusted circle is that you have to really learn to trust them. Uh, that is a circle you um, want to be open with. Uh, you want to be vulnerable with. You want to share pieces of yourself and parts of yourself that you are scared to show, you know, to a large part of the world. Because that's where their support, advice, suggestions, resources come from. And that's how you mobilize them. Uh, but yes, um, mentors at different stages and even in different areas of life uh, are, are absolutely, absolutely great to have. Very, very strongly endorse and support this whole concept of uh, mentorship and even coaching you know that's that's really my passion so i i think coaching is a superbly um positive and productive tool to help you achieve your uh for me i would like to name uh, mira sanyal you know as as a mentor who i worked with uh, you know in my in my banking career and somebody who i absolutely would like to role model, so to speak. You know, it is uh, amazing how intuitive she was as a person um, and how her faith and trust and confidence in me actually made me take on roles, do things that I had never done before. The fact is I'm still young, right? Now, if I were to get younger and give advice, I think I would say a few things. Um, one is be okay to take help and ask for support. 
um i think very early on in my career i wasn't as uh happy to do that and i think that's a very natural process you know when i when i reflect back and think and i think of a lot of the young women that that you know i interact with you feel a little fearful and you feel you know if i say that i need help will it make me appear weaker and that i can now say is not the case asking for help does not make you weaker it helps you to actually make sure you are using your own energy and resources in the best way and using the support system around you in the best way so um i would have probably told myself to be okay to ask for more help and support you know when i when i needed it and you know we were just speaking about mentoring and coaching asking for a mentor or a coach is not a sign of weakness it is not when there is problem or trouble that you need a mentor or a coach a mentor or a coach are very helpful in helping you enhance your performance to realize your core potential and to really get to the next level of wherever you want to get to